Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and with me, as always... Hola, I'm Namio. Yes, Namio, who who you just recently had a crossover with, uh, what, what, what was his name again? Iroz. Iroz, yes. That that went up not only on our site, rtgomer.com, but it's also up on Tigwitig. Woo! It's like, sweet! Yay! And... And and I know what people are thinking. Oh God, she's a female reviewer up on TikTok. She's going to get a lot of negative comments. And um, I looked. Yeah, there are a bunch. They're not as horrible as the ones I've seen. Thankfully. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. Uh, D. Monda Hagen just did a, a fantastic, fantastic video. Uh, it was uh, shit people say on Hagen reviews. Uh, some of those comments. Oh my God. <laughs> Ponies, ponies. I know. Ponies. Oh my god, that that was the funniest one. The, the guy that was just spamming ponies. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna do it, but that made me want to go on like every video and spam ponies because <laughs> I laughed so hard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I think I think the most people had a problem with was I guess just the way you guys presented it. Well, most the, the thing they were most offended at was the fact that we were reviewing Bruce Almighty at all. Like, oh no, it's untouchable. Guess what, fuckers? You know what? Just out of spite, I'm gonna put it on my list, even though it has nothing to. It, it has no thea- you know, like like stage theatrical uh, um, um, adaptation or anything. I'll put it on my list and review it just to spite you, fuckers. <laughs> and, and yeah. Somebody was complaining like somebody was complaining. Mob. Yeah. Somebody was complaining like, oh, it's too nitpicky. That's the name of the game, asshole! No, I was like, have, have you watched anything on this site? Did, <laughs> do you even watch the Nostalgia Grid? Or do you, do you listen, do you listen, do you watch Diamante Hagen? Bro, do you even internet? <laughs> I know, right? Or do you even, well, okay, most people, most of those haven't listened to this show, unless they followed the link because I got to be a whore because somebody was interested in some of the other stuff that you have done. <clears throat> I saw that. I was like, yay! <laughs> it's like, I get to be a whore. And Ooh. I get to work it in properly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, many people have called you a whore. Yes. Joker, and uh, you, you wear the title well. Damn straight I do. Mm. I wish more people would wear the whore title better. Whore needs to be, whore needs to be something that is not a derogatory thing. That's true. Yeah, there you go. There, there is no, no wrongness in it. I, I don't care what kind of slut shaming you want to do, but that's not, the, that's not the point of this show. <laughs> oh, that's wow. crazy. Okay, so I have, I have to tell this story really quick. Tell this uh, story really quick. I think it was on Wednesday. Uh, so I, you know, I had, I hadn't um, even started this week's episodes, uh, and I, I think I was actually at school. And my mother sends me this text message. It says, OMG, Eva just ran over somebody on GH. Eva? And I was like, yeah, EVA. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And she's like, and she, I find, when I finally got to talk to her, she was saying that uh, she just happened to catch the beginning of General Hospital in like a patient's room or something and saw Ava. Uh, you know, hit somebody with her car, and she was so excited she just had to text me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep in mind, she does not watch this show with with us. Like, she's like walked past when my dad and I were watching it before, and so she has no idea what's going on. <laughs> she was so excited she just had to text me. <laughs> there you go. Well, point her to this show. We'll tell her as long as as well as everybody else. I know. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and of course we'll give our opinions on it naturally because this this is basically for the for for uh, simplicity's sake I tend to call it an hour long review because <laughs> that's kind of what it is. That's true. So anyway, <laughs> it's a summary slash me yelling about people being bad at their jobs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, so okay, so leading up to Ava running some poor dude over. Um, that poor dude happened to be Jason. 
Yes. And he and Robin, they got away. They got to Port Charles. And Jason is about to walk into Sonny's place when, you know, some goon comes up and, and he puts a gun in his back. At the same time, Robin makes to her mom's room. Oh, door opens. And holy shit, Helena. Yeah. It's like, okay. Bitch, they got out of there before you did. How the fuck did you beat them to Port Charles? Oh, oh yeah. at least that was at least that was my initial reaction. Then I remembered, wait, there was a there was one point where Robin and Jason had to get rid of a tail. Yes. So, you know, assuming that Helena was also booking it to Port Charles, which she can, because you never know, they, she can have some kind of like private jet or private copter or whatever, depending on what range you need. And go by air and get there that way, which would be faster than going by car, especially if you're trying to lose a tail. Yeah. So, yeah, so so that actually does kind of work out if you actually sit back and think about it. Ah, so they – so, you know, Helena, of course, threatens Robin and her family to get Robin to come along, and and this is the point where Helena is a lot more direct than Victor was. When it comes to threatening Robin's family. Yeah. I mean, Victor did, but he, he didn't just come right out and say, yeah, I'm going to do this to your family and then do it anyway. You know, Helena's like, yeah, we've got hidden cameras set up in your house. And we see there's Patrick. There's your mom. They're talking about everything. They know about Crichton Clark. And if you don't cooperate, I can make you watch as my men kill them. And that is... Yeah, and and that is what makes Robin's goodbye speech to Patrick and Anna later on just that much more of a punch. Because it's like, yeah, you see this, you see the reasons, you know, you actually see that there's more than just, oh my god, you know, go save Jason at stake. It's like, you see, they don't, they obviously don't understand it yet, but you see them. You know, you know that they are in danger, and if Robin doesn't cooperate, they're going to die. You know, so uh, at, if... the, at the same time, this is like I get that Kimberly McCullough is a busy woman. Mm-hmm. I get that she has like side projects. That's fine. I don't have a problem with her like uh, you know popping in and out. I just was, wish the writers would do something a little more creative than because uh, it just feels so forced. Like, oh, we've got to uh, create another obstacle for Robin so that she has to disappear for a while. And like this, is, this one is, is just so much like the last one. Where, oh, I have to tell everybody that I'm leaving to go to Africa um, because, you know, this is just something I need to do, uh, is pretty much, to me, exactly like, I have to leave to go to Paris, this is just something I have to do. Yeah, which, uh, and unfortunately, the way they've got it written, she can't just tell them, yeah, Helena's got a gun to my head, Pat. Practically, and, and yeah. the trigger in if the trigger pulls, I don't die, you die. So you know she can't just do that, especially with Helena sitting right there. Although you know what, she, Robin and Patrick need to come up with like a code word for I've been kidnapped. Yeah, they do. They like, really do. Like if uh, if this isn't true and uh, I'm in trouble, uh, I'm going to talk about the furniture. You know, so, something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but eh, that's something. But I could also see from a – well, okay, maybe at this point, yeah, it would be logical. But when it was first happening, no, 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 no. Even then, it would it would still be logical because look at Robin's parents. You know, you got Anna Devane and Robert Scorpio, both former spies. Well, Scorpio still a spy. Anna, a former spy. You would think – that that Robin would have picked up on something like that and would have thought of that at first, but I guess I guess not unless it's on the fly and and, and convenient for the plot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but in the way Helena deal, dealt with her goons losing Jason, 
because they got they got Jason, and Jason got away by and, jumping out of a moving car. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it worked, <laughs> and you, yeah, can, it's you true. can survive it. You know, it, it, it's survivable. Um, and then the goons go back to Helena and report their failure. Helena pulls a gun. Uh, she like pulls a gun from one of them. And she starts holding it at the goon that was not driving. Yeah. And then she shoots the driver. It's like, okay. I knew somebody was going to get shot, but holy shit. Yeah. Why didn't you kill me? Because I need somebody to carry the body. (sighs) Which I'm like, at, at what point... Do you stop being a henchman when you realize someone is fucking crazy? Like, I'm sorry, like, these guys, they had to know the reputation of the fucking Cassidines. Money. That's true. Money does a hell of a thing. (laughs) Either that or she has been known to have um, younger uh, play toys. Yeah. In, including at one point, I don't, I don't know if they actually did anything, but she flirted heavily with uh, Jax, who is Carly's ex-husband, Jocelyn's father, mm. Australian playboy millionaire, corporate raider type person. Yeah. And then he realized she was buck fuck nuts, and well, <laughs> 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 yeah, Ugh, just goddamn it. Ah, so Helena got away, as I figured she would. Of course she did. She's she's way too much fun. Yeah, she's like, oh god, you know, I'm gonna be sad when when the day comes that uh, Constance Towers passes away, because I I don't think they would replace. I don't I don't I don't know if they would be able to replace Helena with somebody with somebody else, because it's just she's just doing that good of a goddamn job and she's been on the show since like the mid late 90s you know not the character but but the actress mm-hmm. i think constance towers i want to say is the third actress to play helena because originally she's good oh yeah like, she is I, I haven't seen uh any any uh, anyone else play her but uh damn she uh she's got the crazy eyes down oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, like when the Castanines first came back to uh, Port Charles in uni- in universe, uh, Helena was played by somebody else I don't remember. And back in the '80s, when Luke and Laura got married, this was right after Mikos had been foiled and killed and everything. Um, Helena was played by Elizabeth Goddamn Taylor. Oh wow! Oh yeah, <laughs> and she put a curse on Luke and Laura because because oh, yeah, you killed you know he killed her husband. You know. Of course, of course, she put a curse on. Them. Of course, she did. <laughs> of course, why wouldn't? Why wouldn't she? Because I, mean... I mean, she was evil. Her husband is evil. Her husband was evil. She's evil. She obviously supported him enough. Because hi. <laughs> and of course, curses exist. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, this is the thing, and and I don't think it was like meant to be like a literal like you know voodoo magic or anything. Just she's she. I, I think what it was played off as is just more like, oh, I'm going to curse you, my curse on you, like swearing revenge and shit. So that's what it more is. I think at one point they had a plot line where they kind of played up the Cassidyne curse a little bit, but uh, I, I don't... Dishonor on you, dishonor on your cow! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Pretty much. <Sorry. laughs> Dishonor on that cow of a wife. <laughs> I don't know why my son loves her so much. Although her son no longer loves her as much as he loves her daughter. Because Stavros is a creepy fuck. Yeah. Oh, God. Which, I'm like... Uh, yeah, I, I was... Uh, I was uh, kind of running down the plot for my dad. And he was asking if all of these people are actually dead. I'm like, I don't know. For now, possibly. Stavros <laughs> will be back. Victor will be yeah. back. I'm, I'm pretty sure both of them will end up coming back at some point. Please, for the love of God, leave Levi dead. Please. 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 Unless you're going to turn him into a scarily competent villain, leave him the fuck dead. 
And I do mean scarily competent, not like last-minute 11th-hour villain power or something. Yeah. I mean, just shit, man. Oh, lordy, 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 lordy. And I want to know what plans Helena has for Robin and Jason. I, I want to know if they're even if, – if the writers have even figured it out yet. Yeah. I don't know. I mean there, there are some really... plot, there are some plot lines obviously they plan for far in advance. Some of them they just fly by the seat of their pants. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm just saying like with uh, Helena, you can just say, oh, I have plans for Robin and Jason and just like fill in whatever the fuck it was later. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, that's certainly been done to varying degrees of success. But, yeah, but to get to Jason now, he gets away from the Cassidines, and he, he's kind of just kind of on the, you know, trundling along, just, just kind of, you know, trying to find his bearings. And meanwhile, Sean, is, Sean and, and Sonny's men have stormed the apartment, you know, Ava's apartment. You know, took out all the red shirts, including – and the mole got taken out at one point as well. And Sean gets in there, and he's got Ava at gunpoint. you ready to take her, and she, is, of course, is being defiant. And then in comes Jordan. <laughs> okay, we, we have to back up a little bit because yes. let's go back to Nomi ranting about how bad everyone is at their jobs. Okay. And let's talk about Max and Sean. Okay, go for now, it. Now, in this, they actually, you know, Max actually acknowledged that he fucked up. Yeah. Because, you know, they're about to take Ava, and she, like, goes, oh, oh, and, like, pretends to pass out on the couch. Mm -hmm. And they know that she's just faking it, but Max is like, well, what if she's not? And he, like, reaches down to, like, check her pulse, and Ava tries to grab his gun. Yeah. It doesn't work. <laughs> But instead of saying, okay, let's get her the fuck out of here now, for reasons that, you know, might exist somewhere, they're like, okay, Max, you go ahead and leave. Go tell Sonny that I'm bringing Ava, and I'm going to just stand here like a fucking dipshit and talk to her for 20 minutes, mm -hmm. giving Jordan time to come in. Yeah. Now, see, what would have worked better, I think, and, 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 and maybe it was a pacing thing that they had to drag it out a bit, I don't know, but what would have worked better is, like, Max goes to leave, and right as he's about to leave, in comes Jordan, and, and, and with Max there, kind of, you know, for Sean to kind of try and keep under control, that would distract him a little bit more than the fact that, hey, my girlfriend and I are holding guns on each other. And the, the, the prize is Ava Jerome. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It was just, it's like, fucking get out of there, you dumbass. You know that the police are on their way because you just had a, a giant fucking gunfight. Yeah. You know that more Jeromes might be on the way because you just had a giant fucking gunfight. You know that Ava is slippery. Get her the fuck out of there. But no. He has to be incompetent for the sake of the narrative. And I'm yeah. just like, you are, you are bad at, like, you are bad at your job. Like, and, uh, you know, later he goes to Sonny and, you know, tells him and, uh, you know, Sonny kind of acknowledges that Sean is bad at his job. <laughs> because he's like, you know, the job of an enforcer is to make sure, you know, not to let his, you know, uh, personal feelings get involved and Sean goes, you know what, my bad. Yeah, at least he admits it. Yeah, but again, like, I'm sorry, if, if Sean was my employee, I would have fired him a long time ago because he does, he just sucks. He sucks at his job. Everybody sucks. <laughs> oh, God. Just, just, God damn. And, and so Ava gets away in Jordan's car. This is important to note for later. And she's driving. She's frantically – she's calling Julian because she rightly believes once she has that baby, Sonny's going to kill her. What she doesn't tell everybody else is the fact that she killed Connie. But, you know. But still, 
you know, she's she's frantic and she's calling Julian for help, and that's when she runs over Jason. Yep. Like literally runs him over. And and they show like obviously it's like a dummy or something being yeah. run over because I don't I don't think they could do that to an actual actor unless they have no really <laughs> yeah uh, not, not unless not even Buster Keaton would do that kind of shit just or maybe he would I don't know I mean this this is the guy who like just put out his arm and just like latched onto like a fast moving trolley or something you know back in like the 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 golden age of Hollywood and film and everything but anyway. But anyways, they don't have Buster Keaton, so they have to use a ragdoll. And it was like, holy shit. That, that was yeah. kind of brutal. And it was like they showed it at the end of one day's episode, and they show it again at the beginning of the next episode. It's like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good shot. <laughs> yeah. It's just, damn. So Ava's naturally freaking out. And some people some people were actually saying, it's like, well, why is she freaking out? She's a cold-blooded killer. Yeah, but... As, as, and as somebody else pointed out, and, and I agree with this, her killings and, and her her her, uh, uh, her violence is more focused. Yeah. Basically, like you know, she killed Connie because Connie knew too much, and you know she had to protect herself and protect the organization. You know, she was going to shoot Franco because she wanted to protect you know people who loved her and and, and everything like that. You know, so yeah, of course, in those instances, sure cold-blooded well, killer I'm, I'm sorry like ava is not completely cold-blooded exactly you know she's she's human she has emotion that she has regrets mm-hmm. and she is genuinely terrified right now oh yeah and you know this random guy she runs up, of course she's gonna feel bad about that he didn't do anything to her yeah and he wasn't a threat to her family or anybody she loved so, you know, she gets there. She she realizes immediately she can't call nine one one because then Sonny would find her. Not that it does any good. But anyways, Jordan gets there. Jordan takes the rap for her so she can get away. Ava ends up getting to the brownstone and hiding out with Morgan, who who is who who for Morgan he is stepping up and and he is wanting to protect her even though it basically pits him against his dad again. But, and Ava tries to, you know, tries to not do that, which, you know, speaks a lot to uh, to her. And, you know, I I like Ava and Morgan together. I'm just going to say it. I do. Yeah. I, they are super adorable. They genuinely care about each other. And they genuinely want to take care of each other. Yeah. And. And I do like I do like this whole character development that Morgan's been going through. I mean, I remember what was it like, just as much as maybe six months or so ago, that I was railing on Morgan for being a little shit, and now look at him. Yeah, and you know, and you were right to rail on him because he was being a little shit. But yeah, yeah. he's he's changed a lot, and you know, one of the big things that changed him was getting together with Ava. Mm-hmm. Getting there, and and eventually, you know, eventually. Giving possibly a father. Yeah. You know, and I mean, he's even got like the little fatherhood for dummies ebook. Is is it's just kind of, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but yeah, you know, well, the, well, the book title itself is funny. What his yeah. motivations behind it obviously are, are very very good. Oh wow. So, Ava gets away, and last time we see her and Morgan, they're they're arguing about whether or not she should stay there. And he's like, "No, you need to stay, because who else do you have besides me and Kiki right now?" He's trying to be logical, and, and be like, "Yeah, where are you gonna go?" You know, because his dad, you know, you, you know, I I hate the fuck out of Sonny, and and it's like almost every time I see him pull something, I my 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 uh. I want to see him fail more and more, even <laughs> if even if the ends of what he's trying to do, and that is make Ava pay for killing Connie, are completely justified. It's like, dude, you do so much heinous shit. Yeah. It's, it's like I, I, I feel very little sympathy for you, dude, at this point. Yeah. Now, there, there may be points where I might be able to pick it up again. Who knows? But at this point, I feel very little sympathy for you. I mean, is it – I mean, yeah, you say it's about Connie. But, but you know, uh, it's just, uh, 
how much of it is really just about Connie and more just keeping Ava under his control? Because as he's shown, he has the power in Port Charles to get to Ava whenever he wants. He doesn't need Ava under his direct thumb. He doesn't need that. He can find her. He could take her out whenever. You know, and the cops, you can't, and the cops can't touch him. Yeah. Unless he wants them to. So, yeah, I think he just likes the power and the control. And that's all, and that's basically what he wants. And I'm willing to bet that once Ava has that baby, he wouldn't outright kill Ava, at least not right away. He would either not do it or something would prevent him from doing it, and he would end up turning it into this little game where he just torments Ava until the day she dies or goes insane. I'm willing to bet. Yeah, it'll be inter- it'll be interesting to see what direction they go with that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, but yeah, but speaking of Sonny being a manipulative asshole, um, so it, catch it, me catch me up a little bit about uh, is he is he actually want Carly back? Yes. Or okay, so why did that come up? Well, I, I want to say that him going back to Carly is kind of a rebound from Olivia. Because, you know, we've always been there for each other. Da, 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 and it's like, dude, you're just going back to somebody that... You, 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 God damn it, Sonny. I mean, you fucked things up with Olivia. Royally. First by sleeping with Ava. And then not telling Olivia every, everything you know about why you're keeping Ava... Or why yeah, you kept like, Ava around. It's like, dude, she would have understood. Yeah, you of know, all I the fucking people, she would have understood. I don't really understand why Sonny isn't telling people about Ava killing Connie. Like, yeah, like it's, like you said, especially Olivia. Yeah. Like, why not? And also, why not tell Morgan? Yeah, I mean, I mean, okay, yeah, she knows that he killed AJ. Okay, you know what? How many of those people are and, and and I've thought about this. I've thought about this. How many of those people would actually believe him without That's the recording? That's true. Now, if somebody played the recording, then sure. Yeah. That would be, that would be more believable. You know, even Morgan would be like, "No, no, 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 no. No record. If there's no recording, he wouldn't believe it." And then play the recording. What the fuck, dad? And it's like, and and I know all of this. In the end, it's it's all going to come crashing down on Michael, yeah. because Michael is the designated break the cutie character. Uh, and of course, of course, yeah, ha, 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 Franco. F- speak, speaking of of Sonny and Carly and all of them around, Franco. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, yeah yo, knows. it's holy shit. Like, I I was not. Expect, expecting that twist with Franco. I mean, you know, Nina told him about Carly and Sonny sleeping together, and, you know, at first she was like, I don't believe it, but then he, you know, cornered Kiki and was like, is it true? And, you know, of course she can't lie to his face. Yeah. And, you know, we were both predicting that that's when uh, the truth about AJ would come out, but no! No! No, he turns that... around and proposes to her. Yeah, he proposes to Carly, and it's like... And, you know, when Kiki and Morgan were talking about it later, um, it was bas- they were basically like, you know, he's clearly doing this to test her. Yeah. And, you know, he... he... Because, you know, first he proposes, and then after the party's over... Uh, he basically pressures her into setting the date for Halloween. Mm-hmm. Which, and, eh. Eh, which pressuring aside, you know, if that's if you want to do it like the time at that, you know, like at a date that would be like an anniversary of when you become a couple or whatever, you know, that that in and of itself is is kind of neat. But this is also Franco we're talking about. Yeah, you know, so pressured her into it, which tells me he's got something planned. He's got something cooking. 
Well, and like on on some level, like I can kind of understand what he's doing because he, it, you know, since they pulled out his brain tumor and magically changed his entire character, most of his identity that he's built up has been around Carly. Yeah. Like, he's been kind of obsessed with her, you know, he can't, you know, he can't be an artist anymore, and, um, you know, without that, all he's got is his relationship with Carly, and so he's so terrified of losing that that he's, you know, going to do anything to hold on to it, and he just, he just wants to be sure that she's not going to go back to Sunny. Like, I do get that on some level Mm -hmm. but it's like dude just just come out and say what's going on like that that is that is the one thing that that yeah although i will give him a little bit of credit he did seem like because there was one point where he was talking about you know no secrets between us and everything and it was it was clear it was clear he was wanting carly to admit it to admit what she had done and I have a feeling that if that if she had fallen for it, maybe you know, yeah, Franco would have been a little bit upset. Sure, you know, why not? Because I, I think everybody would be. But I, I think he probably would have. I, then keep in mind, this is guessing here. I'm, I'm guessing that if Carly had admitted to Franco, then Franco would find it a little easier to forgive her. You know. Instead yeah. of her lying and 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 lying. And I'm not going to make that into some overly long gag, so no. But so it's like so it's like I have a feeling he's going to give her several chances to confess. And what's gonna end up happening is she doesn't and Halloween comes around and he reveals everything. For either real. That, either that or Sonny does like tries to interrupt their wedding and says something about it. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. In which case oh god, that's a wild card. Because <laughs> of course Sonny wants Carly and nobody else can have Carly but him. Me, 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 me. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's another and that's another thing about him. It's like he wants Carly, so he should get her. Nobody else, or at least not Franco, because, yeah, Franco had bad past. Yeah, Franco terrorized his family for a while, but he's getting better. You know, he he is okay. He was pretty much dead for a while. Yeah. And, you know, so so he kind of paid for it all. And. It's so, you know, paid for it by virtue of, well, being dead. <laughs> well, so, and it's you know, going to be back and... it's gonna be really interesting to see um, the dynamic when when Jason eventually wakes up, because, you know, you know, he's going to. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's getting, excuse me, it's getting <laughs> a little bit annoying how they're like drawing it out with like not showing his face and not showing his face and not having him speak and not having him speak. Yeah, give I'm them... like, if you're gonna bring the character back, just fucking bring the character back. Yeah, well, they they do have the new guy, uh, Billy Miller, I think his name is, but uh, yeah, they got him. I, I I guess they don't have his first film scenes going up yet, unless he, that is him under the bandages and the gauze and everything. I don't know. They they did replace him in all the pictures. I noticed. I did not notice that. I must have missed I, that. I think anyway. Um, That's... but. But yeah, so anyways, then that that does lead back. Jason, of course, is taken to the hospital, and you know Jordan miraculously is not charged. Well, she's not can't be charged with hit and run. Um, yeah, cause, well, and you know it's just uh, it's it's being ruled an accident, yeah. and uh, you know I think it's the the following day when she goes in, um, the nurse uh, tells her that you know. It's you know it was it wasn't it. It was an accident. The police said it wasn't her fault. Yeah. So yeah, and at the same time, she's also seen with Ava's pills, which gets Sabrina a little real riled up. Like, whoa, wait, wait, wait! What do you do with those pills? What do you do with those pills? Because Sabrina still wants to kill Ava's baby because, well, Gabriel. Again, computer false information in, false information out. 
you know. So it's kind of like Ava's little trick with Carlos is coming back to bite her in the ass. Or trying to bite her in the ass, but it keeps missing. Because Sabrina is, 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 is not this manipulative you know this manipulative person she's generally a sweet and 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 a little tough uh you know woman you know mm-hmm. so this is definitely out of character for her at this point so of course the snake's going to keep missing and it's not going to bite ava on the ass cuz well things happen <laughs> yeah uh, and 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 of course Sean finds jordan at the hospital because Sean apparently stalks her i don't know and, well, and, he, and, he, and, he was he was he, he was trying to follow up and find Ava, so it makes sense that he was kind of stalking Jordan. Well, yeah, and and it goes back to what I was saying earlier about Sonny being able to get to Ava wherever she is, because you've got Sean. I mean, there's no telling how many goons Sonny has. Uh, and and to even tie it back uh, to the beginning when Jason was you know taking a gunpoint from Sonny's, yeah. It was very convenient that he went in there when there was only one goon on guard at Sonny's house. <laughs> very Isn't convenient. It convenient, yeah. Very convenient. And and yes, to get Jason to go initially go along with him, he got the same threat that Robin did. You know, you either come with us or we kill your loved ones inside. Yeah. And Jason had a scalpel that Robin had given to him in the car. And it looked like he was might have tried to use it, and the guy's like, "Yeah, you try that. We gonna kill everybody here." And Jason drops it, and Sonny, I, I think Sonny and Sam notice the scalpel on the outside, yes. and, and Sonny's like, "Wait, what the fuck is this?" Uh, so there's a clue for you, mm-hmm. and so Jason's wheeled in, and he's getting surgery prepped and everything. He almost they almost lose him a time or two. And one of the attending nurses is Elizabeth. Yes. Who, of course, doesn't recognize him because his face is so injured. Yeah, it happens. Uh, I mean, it, it, yeah, it does not look like Steve Burton under there. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> Probably won't sound like him either when he finally talks, which that's going to be a little, a little weird to get used to. But, you know, that, it happens. Of course, it oh. wasn't as weird. It wasn't as weird as playing uh, like uh, one of the Dissidia Final Fantasy games, playing as Cloud, and but like that's not Cloud, that's Jason Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I like I like I like remembering that. That's it's, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting uh, if they wait to wake him up until after Carly and Franco are married. Oh God, you just don't put him in a month long coma, guys. Come on, we 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 want to we want we want we want to go ahead and get him in, get him reintegrated, and all of that. All of, all of the fun stuff that comes along with it, um, and I and, and oh, Sean and Jordan is like, Jordan, you you know you two have private time. Why not? I mean, I mean maybe 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 I'm naive or, or maybe I'm I'm thinking the wrong way, but why not just tell Sean you're DEA and working undercover against the Jeromes? You know she because is, that would make too much sense. I guess. Either that, or once that's known, then, of course, Sonny would be a little paranoid, because, oh, well, not that he would have any reason to be, because DEA deals with drugs. Yeah. And, and, and Sonny, Sonny doesn't do drugs. I mean, uh, that is, that is you know, those, those are one of those rare points I will give Sonny. He won't do drugs. He won't move drugs. Yeah. You know, I, and, he's but seen, he has seen the effects it's had on kids, and he's like, you know what? I may be a criminal, I, I may be a misogynistic, abusive asshole, but I will not move drugs in my city. Uh, and, you know, Jordan, instead of, you know, just telling Sean the truth, she's like, hey, I'm going to try and fuck you right here in this hospital room. Yeah, because logic. And I'm like, uh, what? And Sean's like, oh, what? <laughs> it's like no. To be to be fair, I don't I, I don't I haven't seen the the this particular way of going at is usually I want to say it's usually the guy trying to do that to the woman in a situation like that. I want to say I could be completely wrong, but it was just like yeah. Uh. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I I was like what what are you doing like. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, and to to add to more to Julian's plate, because Julian has come back out of town, because, hey, his sister was almost kidnapped by his enemy. And, you know, he's looking around trying to find Ava, and fake Luke has sent another hitman. And, and well, Julian sent, is able to, like, you know, fend him off, send him away, and we're pretty sure that this hitman is likely going to go after Michael. That's well, yeah, he's he, gonna find he way. said he's going to go after Michael. Yeah. And, yeah, I, although I, I did love the way Julian dealt with him, because, you know, this guy is bigger than him, obviously dumber uh, and more violent, <clears throat> and Julian took him down anyway and was like, you know what, you know, the boss needs me more than I need him. I'm not going to be his errand boy, and I'm not going to let a little bitch like you intimidate me, basically. Oh, yeah. It's like, go, Julian. Yes. And 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 he won that argument. And, and he's like, you know, I'm not going to be the boss's errand boy. And the thug was like, well, then I guess I have to go kill Michael myself. Yeah, good luck with that. Because Michael... For you know, he may not seem like it, but I I think he would have an issue trying to kill Michael. I I, I just think he would. You know. Yeah. Michael's Michael's no dummy. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Raised raised with a mobster father. Hi. Um. So uh, in in better news, the the uh, you know you know people that were at Crank Clark make have made their way back and 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 of course. Um, Oh, Lordy. Uh, and some of them are also starting to realize that Luke is the one possibly running the Jerome crime family. Yeah. Spoiler, he is. Uh, but that's not a spoiler. We already knew that. And it's not even really Luke. It's a fake Luke. Yeah. And and so they all get back. They have their happy reunions. Maxie and Nathan you know, actually set a date. You know, that doesn't involve kissing over dead bodies. <laughs> And it's all cute and everything, and and Nicholas is going around. He he's he's for he's at the Lulu Lulu. Uh, he's at the homecoming for a uh, Lulu and Dante, and, and you know he scoots off, and then he goes to the police station to talk to Britt and and all of them there, and he introduces himself, you know, to Nathan. So you know, and say hey cousin, even though what they don't know is Nathan is not really a Cassidyne, and and. Of course, he and Nicholas are going to end up having some sort of chat about the family because, you know, history and shit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, your uncle tried to freeze the world at one point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, and, of course, Britt and Mac and Felicia are all, you know, like, they're, they're sitting there egging Nathan and Maxie on about each other, of course. Yes. And Felicia now has the Aztec dagger. I am calling it that. I don't care what anybody else said. Is it is it is the Aztec dagger that is fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, that it's as it's as good a name as any. I mean, it's made from the Aztec jewels, and <clears throat> it's a dagger. So yeah, I call it an Aztec dagger. Yes, and it, it actually kind of sounds like a video game weapon too. It's it's, <laughs> it's something true. you would pick up in an RPG. You got the Aztec dagger. You know, plus ten to annoying fake Aussies. <laughs> plus ten against them, rather. Yeah. Right in the back. But you gotta stab him in the back. If you stab him in the front, it's not so good. But um, ah, <laughs> oh, fuck Levi. I'm glad he's dead. Use this to unlock the next plot point. Yeah. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, and Obrex and holding because you know information. Yeah. Uh, because hey, you know she 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 might have some info. Hey, who knows? She might be willing to give it. Um, especially she, since Anna has proven herself to be like, hey, you know what? I give a damn about your son just like you do. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. And I am willing – I am I am waiting to uh, to see because <laughs> at this point, we're pretty sure we, – we, we have a really good assumption that Robert and Anna killed Faison last – you know, last – I think it was last year. Yeah, it was about last year. Yeah, the – Wow. Not that they're gonna say it ever, uh, or the, uh, sorry, they're gonna draw it out, draw it out, way out, because you know. <clears throat> yeah, not that it'll draw Anna it out. Was, Anna was about to tell Duke, and then OMG Lucy, and you know it's like do 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 do. Ah. Um, yeah, and of course, Scott 
Scott, he he actually he actually made a decision. He picked Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, yeah, and poor Lucy's like, ah! it's like, and you know, it's like Lucy. Okay, Lucy Co. Let me tell you something. All right, when you're doing the nurses ball, when you're on your own thing, when you're not when you're not failing the Bechtel test all over the damn place, you could be kind of funny. You know, nurses ball, emceeing the nurses ball, you're good. You know, be, being a, a silly, quirky, comic relief character, okay, sure. But when you're sitting there, you know, pining for a man you cheated on, who I still love his line when he confronted Lucy at the nurses ball. You had one job, Lucy. Yeah. I, I I love that line. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's just the internet meme study person-y thingy in me. But it, it's just, yeah. Anyway, when she's not pining away for a man she cheated on with another man who obviously, well, yeah, he had a thing for her at the time. But Lucy flip-flopping and being wishy-washy and everything, he, you know, you know Scott's getting up there in years and so is she and Bobby. You know, they're all getting up there in years. I mean, if they want, if, if they really want to have a companion to perhaps spend whatever years they have left together with, then they they've got to you know they've got to settle down if they wanted if they wanted to go you know as, assuming monogamous route here, which in this case it is. But you know, so it's like yeah, Scott can't wait around forever. He won't wait around forever because it's just he's you know. Why wait around for just one person when that one person keeps flip flopping between you and somebody else? And it's just no. Yeah, yeah, you know. <clears throat> but I don't know. It's it's gonna be. I, I I'm betting there that it's not the last time that Bobby and or not Bobby uh, that Lucy and Scott wind up in bed together. Oh, probably not. <laughs> but, you know, he, he basically told Bobby that the reason he chose her over Lucy was because he was afraid Lucy was going to go back to Kevin. Yeah, which I can understand that. I mean, I mean, definitely, especially, again, Lucy, flip floppy, wishy washy. But, you know, if I'm Bobby, that's not going to be, you know, much comfort it's basically like, well, you, you know, you're the safer choice, but you're not the choice that my heart wants. Is like what I would feel like he was saying. But. Yeah, which and maybe Bobby feels the same way and understands, but at the same time, it's like, you know what? I'll take it. Yeah. You know, again, everybody's they're getting older. You know, maybe maybe they want to. You know, a little bit of stability is nice here and there. And I find it interesting that at when Franco proposed to Carly and, and, and got, they got engaged and everything, Scott seemed to be the only one to directly to congratulate him. Yeah. I mean, Kiki pulled him to the side like, what the fuck? Michael's like, oh, I don't like it as long as you're happy. Uh. And, well, of course, Carly, well, she's at the center of it all. And yeah. Bobby – and just like – well, of course, everybody's shocked. Everybody, everybody watching it was shocked. <laughs> I mean, it's like I didn't expect it. Like, like yeah. you said earlier, we did not expect this to happen. What the sense make? Yeah. yeah. Uh. <laughs> but still, but oh, but but you know, I still have the popcorn and lube on standby for when AJ <laughs> Se- when when Sunny's Secret about AJ comes out. <laughs> I'm going to have the popcorn. I'm going to have the lube. Just, just don't get them mixed up. <laughs> no, do not get them mixed up. Although, although if I get the butter flavored lube, that that might that might work better. I, I just, uh, yeah, I was I was more thinking that the popcorn wouldn't feel that great, but that's. No. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and, and yes, for those so who... they have really sharp kernels, is what I'm saying. <laughs> ah no, no. <laughs> Oh, that, wow. sorry. That was that was a bad tangent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. And for those who need it spelled out, yes, I will watch this when it, when it finally comes out. And Sunny and people realize that Sunny is the one who killed AJ, and Sunny's starting to get his comeuppance for that. I will jack off to that because that will be so awesome. <laughs> <sighs> Fuck Sonny. 
Yeah. Oh, so I've I think I kind of touched on it earlier. People are realizing that Fake Luke is the one behind the Jeromes, and and Tracy is among them. Yeah, and, yeah. and that was actually uh, really interesting because um, you know it was it was uh, a, yeah it was two different conversations happening at the same time. It was Patrick and Sam with Alexis. And uh, then in a different place, Dante and Lulu with Tracy talking and connecting the dots and figuring out that uh, Luke was the one that Julian met with at Windermere on the night of um, Britt and Nicholas's engagement party. And, you know, because they, they, you know, they knew he was meeting his boss, basically, you know, Julian was meeting his boss, basically. And, uh you know, just kind of putting the dots together that uh, they disappeared. Uh, Mm -hmm. And uh, Tracy finally came out and said that she hasn't seen Luke since their honeymoon. Yeah. And it's like, he's he's like a complete stranger. And, you know. Gee, I wonder why. But of course nobody suspects it might not be Luke because, I mean, it's not like a bad person has, you know, masqueraded for months as one of the good guys before. I mean, that's <laughs> what happened in the history of Port Charles. So clearly no one would ever think of it. Yeah, I mean, it's not like Cesar Faison hasn't masqueraded as fucking Duke Lavery. Oh, wait, he did. And it's not like, I mean, hell, even back in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, a guy that was masquerading as Duke, another guy who was masquerading as Duke was... I want to say – I don't remember who he was working for, but it was a man by the name of Jonathan Paget, who was masquerading as Duke. So it's like, it's like they, they tend to go to Duke on this. <laughs> so it's kind of kind of interesting now that they're – instead of Duke, they're going after Luke for this. And I just got – I'm still trying to narrow <laughs> – Yeah. Maybe they got them confused in the script because they both rhyme. <laughs> That would be that would be funny, but but then again, I know I, I know like in an interview, Tony Geary was like, you know, I want something a little darker, and so he got it. So so, uh, but that would be funny if that's what ended up oh. leading up to it all. But anyway, um, where, where, where was I? Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, Julian is also you know looking for Ava, and he ends up interrupting Alexis's date with Ned to say, hey, can you help me find my sister? Can you can you talk to Sonny? You know, that sort of thing. And meanwhile, while Julian's interrupting, Olivia sits down, starts drinking, and, and just confiding in Ned, you know, being like, yeah, you know, we're home. You know, they're home. Let's go catch a movie sometime. And poor Ned, he's sitting there like, uh, uh trying to date me. And, and Alexis comes back, and Olivia's like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to tell you. Oh. You know, yeah, and, and Ned's just kind of sitting there, you know, deer in the headlights, like, uh, <laughs> waiting to get a word in edgewise, and Olivia just does not shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I have to, I have to give it to Ned. It's like, oh, man. Ah. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, man, so, so now, now that, you know, Tracy has the seed in her mind, Alexis has the seed in her mind, and keep in mind, over the years, there haven't been so much in recent years, but like when Alexis was first on the show, she and Luke were pretty deep in cahoots in, in certain play, in certain points. Like um, when uh, Catherine Bell, she initially fell from a parapet at Windermere, that was a trap meant for Helena. And I don't remember exactly what drama happened to cause her to go to the parapet or whatever. But uh, she was there, and she was backing away. I think it was from Stefan or something. She was backing away, and she she trying to grab the the uh, the gate that 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 uh, Luke and Alexis had loosened for as a trap for Helena. And well, it was pretty loose because down she goes. Yeah, splat. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and then the second time Catherine Bell went off the parapet, um, Helena did it herself. Of course. Because he's like, bitch, I don't need you anymore. Phew! So, yeah. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um... 
trying to see. Uh, I've I've got my cheat sheet open here. I'm trying to make sure we didn't miss anything. Um. Oh yeah. By the way, I I, I have to note this because they keep calling it Skype, but uh, that doesn't look anything like Skype. No, it doesn't. No, it's generic Skype. It, it's a uh, it's a uh, magic Photoshop. Yes. Uh... It's it's like okay okay. <laughs> ABC, you're owned by Disney, uh, which means you're owned by one of the biggest entertainment companies on the fucking planet. You can afford to get the rights to use Skype's imagery, at the very least. You no, know, it, it would be weird for them to be able to use the name and not, like, the the actual, yeah, actual picture program. of, like, actual footage of the program. Like, that doesn't really make sense, but that... But then again, actual Skype would never, ever, ever be able to get a picture that clear. No, it wouldn't. Well, at least not with our regular, you know, connections. I mean, just, it just wouldn't. But who knows? We might, you know, they might have better connections, better tech on their, on the show or what have you. I mean, clearly they have better tech on the show in, in a lot of different cases. I mean, hi, bringing people back from the goddamn dead. I was going to say, I, I wouldn't so much call it technology as magic, but yes, you are correct. Well, they try, to, they try with some, you know, there's some techno babble involved, but, but it's, it's still, it's more tech based than magic based, yes. I would say. So it, it's possible, very much possible. Uh, but yeah, that, that's, that's going to be it. We're about out of time for this week. Uh, so that's going to have to be it for right now. Um, this week, overall, I had fun. Yeah. Uh, I look forward to what's coming up next week. Because somehow, cause one of the previews for uh, the following show, uh, Danny is drawn to Jason, even though he doesn't really know who he is. And, of course, that's going to be played off as some co- sort of foreshadowing or symbolism or something. Da, da, da. And... And I'm, I'm understanding. It seems like, it seems like Kiki will find out that Ava's there and what's going on and what's going down. Well, well, uh, at the end of the week, uh, Kiki came in and saw Ava there. It was one that's of the right. players. Oh, that's and, right. Oh, that's right. I did miss out on that a little bit, didn't I? <laughs> it's okay. Uh, and well, and then um, you know we had the shot of. Uh, Michael answering his answering the door in a towel because a eye candy and b cliffhanger because you know the thug had said he was going to go kill Michael. I'm calling it that the thug is not the one at the door because that would be way too direct. Yeah. For General Hospital. Definitely. Although, well, hey, if you want direct, you hire Helena Cassidyne. That's true. So you know she is direct, mostly. I mean, poisoning Luke with a polonium laced earring. I don't know how direct that is, but you know. Oh, let's see. Um, ah, I, I'm just the more shots people take at Sunny, and I don't necessarily mean literal shots, because um, I don't want the character to die. I, I just want him to be taking down all of the pegs. I mean, just, you know, like, like I, I think it was last week's show. Uh, he's at the top of the Eiffel Tower right now. We need to bring him down to the bottom. Yeah. That's all. That's all we need to do. Bring him down, humiliate him, you know, make him humble, a lot more humble. And, you know, you know show him, like, actual proper consequences for a lot of his actions that he doesn't just bounce back from in just a couple of years. Like, when it comes out, and yes, it's going to be a win, it comes out that Sonny killed AJ, I hope Michael writes him off for at least a decade. At least. You know. I mean, not, and maybe even forever, I don't know. But, because that is some really, really horrific betrayal on Sonny's part. And, and you know what? I hope that when it does come out, the guilt comes back and it eats Sonny, and it eats him to the point of... <laughs> <laughs> Again, lube and popcorn. Lube and popcorn. <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, that's going to be it for this week. Uh, I do look forward to the next week. <laughs> and uh, so if we wanted to find Namio on social media, where could we find her? You can find me on Tumblr, uh, Namio's Corner. 
You can find me on Twitter at, at Naomi Washburn. And you can find me on the fabulous RTGomer.com. Sweet. And as far as me, if you wanted to find me on social media, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at gomer 21 X. Uh, you can find my stuff on uh, nerdvice.com and rtgomer.com, as well as this show and both my other podcasts. They're all, we're also all on iTunes, you know, if you're not already listening to it on iTunes. If, you're, if you are, then hi. Um, you know, leave, leave, a, leave a review. You know, say something, and, and feedback is always nice. Um, and if you like this show, and you like the other shows that I do and that I produce, uh, I do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash gomer 21 X. And if you go there for as little as just $1 per production released, um, you can get, you know, early access to all the ne- all the newest shows. You get a monthly vlog. You get all sorts of all sorts of cool little things, and that's just a dollar per uh, production at uh, patreon.com slash gomer to one double X. And as a bonus, uh, my girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, she is a wonderful title card artist, and she's also responsible for some of the title cards that have been recently popping up on the site. Uh, she has her own Patreon page as well, patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Go there, toss some money at her. She'll do some artwork for you. And if you throw enough money at her, she will do a, a nice little 30-second animation just for your face. Ooh. Did I mention she's an award-winning animator? She's awesome. She is awesome. She is very awesome. Um, and, of course, her Patreon page also has links to her DeviantArt, her own personal web space as well. Um, so go check her out. Again, that's patreon.com slash beckyhop. And thank you guys for listening. We're going to get out of here. And until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.